This video will be concerned with effective groups and what makes effective groups. There are two main outputs of group activity. First of all, achievement of goals within the specified time frame. So we measure group activity and, and the success of group activity if they meet their specified goals within the specified time frame. So goals within time frame. That's the, the first measure of effectiveness of a group. Secondly, it's group member uh, or, or members satisfaction with the experience of working in groups. Were they satisfied with it? If they were, if they were happy to do it again, that's an effective group. If there was a lot of ill will and discontent and disputes within the group, that was not an effective group. So we have two ways of looking at effectiveness in groups. In fact, we have two conditions to be met if we are going to gauge a group to be effective. And these are the two of them in front of us. The effectiveness of a group should be measured against these outcomes. So those are our overarching requirements for a, to, to measure effective group interactions and achievements. Now, group effectiveness can be determined by group cohesion, by communications, the extent of communications within the group and the quality of the communications within the group. Defined roles and responsibilities for each me, uh, team member. It's important that the, the group has a structure and that there are roles and responsibilities allocated to each member of the team. The ability to plan, set deadlines and achieve goals. So that's another way of looking at group effectiveness and it can be determined by their ability to organize meetings and come up with coherent plans and logical procedures and to be able to set deadlines, realistic deadlines, and then to achieve the goals that they set out to achieve. The group members, uh, member motivation to complete the tasks. Uh, do the individual members have good motivation or what can be done to improve motivation within the group? Martin 2005 explains the following as group characteristics which determine its effectiveness. And we're going to spend the, the rest of this session looking at these points made by Martin. So first of all, we can define uh, or set up a table which will look at uh, the, the group in terms of dimension, effective group, and ineffective group. So the dimension will be what it is we're looking at, and then we'll say whether it's uh, wh what an effective group will see and what an ineffective group would see. So if we look at, the, for example, the atmosphere, the effective group would be informal, comfortable and relaxed. That would be effective. The ineffective group would be indifferent, boredom and tension. So when we think of an atmosphere, we, we can think of the what, what the effective group will give off as, as, as a feeling for their uh, interaction. And the feelings they would give off would be one of informality and they're comfortable with each other and they're relaxed about the tasks and they're quite at ease. The ineffective group on the other hand indifferent, don't really care, boredom. Right from the start perhaps they're bored and tension between them, who's doing what and infighting from the start. If you look at the dimension for discussion with the effective group it would be participative and pertinent to the task. It would be related to the task and 
So we'd all join in the discussions and, and debate it and talk about the issue, talk about why they were formed as a group, what they were trying to achieve. The ineffective group would be dominated by few people and a lack of contribution by others. So a few people will do all the talking and the rest will sit around and and agree perhaps at the end, or not agree, in which case they don't participate. Objectives, well, clearly defined and understood by all. Whereas for an ineffective group, misleading, causing confusion, not accepted by all. Active listening, well, all views are considered by an effective group, respected, positive debates. Whereas with the ineffective group, active listening is met with uh, dominating ideas over others, not supporting or building on from each other, much more internal stress and confrontation and argument. They're not really being constructive, they are more interested almost in being destructive. Um, disagreement. What happens when there is a disagreement? Well, the effective group will effectively deal with this as soon as it arises. There is a disagreement, so they sit down and solve it, get it resolved and move on. The ineffective group may avoid it, just not talk about it, just dis disagreement. It's suppressed by the group leaders, they don't want to think about it. Which is not healthy. It'll come back in the end to, to cause a problem. Decision making. Well, decision, for an effective group, decision making will be accepted by all members and with agreement by consensus. If it's a truly effective group, they'll they'll all submit to the whatever the decision made was. In fact, they'll there'll be consensus. They all agree with it. With the ineffective group, there will be a lack of communication, and there may be even decisions made without the group being consulted. When there's criticism, well, uh, the effective group will, first of all, uh, promise confiden confidentiality to someone who's got a grievance, and so there's nobody intimidated or, or feel embarrassed. And there should be positive feedback for growth. In other words, once once the criticism has been dealt with and the issue has been dealt with then it should be fed back to the group so that they can all learn from it and improve in the future as a consequence. But, and that's that's the way criticism should be dealt with. It should be dealt with almost confidentially and but it also should be dealt with fairly and there should be some learning from the criticism. There should be some outcome that will guide the group in the future so as the, the same mistake is not made in the future. But for an ineffective group it will be much more personal. They will feel if there's a criticism it's a criticism against them personally. It can lead to embarrassing situations and it can be very destructive, confrontational. When we talk about feelings, well Feelings in an effective group are openly expressed by all members. They talk about how they feel about it and how it's going and how the the group is interacting and what issues they're confronting and how they, they feel about the whole thing. And so there's an openness about them. But whereas with ineffective groups, they don't really give it very much attention at all. Feelings are not what they're there for. They're, they see this probably as a waste of time. So why spend time talking about their feelings about the situation? So it's again an ineffective group. Um, action. Well, allocation of roles and uh, these are accepted by all the members. So action, if, if something needs to be done, 
they, they are allocated they're allocated out to the members and the members accept this this has to be done the, these actions have to be performed so the, the members get on with it for an ineffective group it's forced on group members without assessing their suitability it, it's an ineffective group says these things need to be done it'll be done by you, you and you without much regard to their ability or their competencies in those areas it'll just be allocated out that would be very ineffective there should always be an attempt to marry up skills and competencies with task requirements leadership well for an effective group a uh, leader works with the group the leader should be involved the leader should be available and to be to be consulted and uh, seek opinions from the group themselves it should be more participative they should be able to work together whereas an ineffective group the the chairperson uh, dominates everything just issues commands issues orders so there's alienation by the, the group. They, they don't feel they're able to speak to the leader. They don't feel like they're able to communicate. Um, reviews. Well, uh, frequent progress reviews and feedback will be held by effective groups. If nothing else, it will stimulate motivation if they're doing well they should be told they're doing well and that'll enable them to uh, work harder and, and feel that they're achieving something so the reviews are a good thing if the reviews are not so good there's learning to be had from that and the individual members of the group can learn from what went wrong try to put it right correct uh, their work or their orientation towards a particular task so that in the future it can be done much more efficiently and more competently. But for the ineffective group, reviews just lack of direction, no discussion or project deadlines. It's just drifting along. There's no there are no milestones. There's no there's no direction to the group. It's just trying to achieve tasks and just working almost blindly towards the task. So these are the, the differences between effective groups and ineffective groups as set out by Martin. It's a good list, it's, it's a long list, it's 11 and we can relate to all of the points uh, that he made all the way up to the point number 11. So it's worth again going across those in your own time and having a look at them in more detail and thinking about them because the distinction then between an effective group and an ineffective group becomes clear through the consideration of these various dimensions. That's the, the source that I mentioned and that brings us to an end. So that's all we're going to deal with in terms of effective groups and in this case effective and ineffective groups but uh, let's leave it at that and say thank you for watching.